Salam doctors, welcome to the episode talking about the tooth morphology and the pulpal access cavities. We will discuss some tricks and tips that will help us to maintain a conservative access cavity at the same time uh, reaching all the canals possible are, that are located in the tooth. The color of, of the pulp chamber floor is always darker than the walls. This is a tip that, that we must take perspective of to know uh, that the, the canal orifices are darker than the walls. What are the pulp parts? We know that there is a pulp that in, in cal- that is located in the, in the coronal area and it is called the pulp the pulp chambers it has like uh, these per- protrusions uh, under each cusp uh, they are called the pulp horns as for the pulp that is encounters the the root canal it is called the 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 root canal pulp you can see that uh, accessory uh, accessory canals are present in different areas uh, for example if you have an accessory canal in the furcation area it's gonna be called the furcation canal if it is in the uh, root uh, space it's gonna be called lateral canal and if it is in the radicular space area it's gonna be called the apical delta and if uh, the the root is is multi canaled and there is a connection between these canals, this uh, connection is called the isthmus. Accessory canals are usually found in the apical third of the tooth, uh, and uh, in a percentage of seventy four of the cases. Actually. Uh, accessory canals have no important uh, role in um, in uh, applying the main uh, uh, pulp with the blood. They the the circulation of the, uh, of the blood inside the peripheral canals are usually so uh, minimal, so they can on the they can act as an a pathway for the for infection to the peri uh, the periapical area. They are formed by the uh, interruptment of periodontal vessels in Hertwig's epithelial root uh, sheath during mineralization. As for the furcation a- uh, canals that we talked that they are located in the furcation area. How did they form? They formed when the when the roots uh, were were forming and they are fusing with, with each other. Uh, the fusion of the diagram. Um, these vessels stayed in between to create what we call now the furcation canals. And if a pa- pathologies uh, penetrate through them, we will have a lesion that will look on the radiograph like this radiolucency and it usually heals after we do the root canal treatment. So this is the furcation area that is located in the pulp floor and has the, uh, a, a direct connection between the pulp floor and the period, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tissue around the tooth here and if the, this is the accessory canal that is found in 23% of uh, the cases. Uh, the combination of both is rare and it is uh, in 10% of the canals. After collecting the all possible root canal anatomy uh, in the past 125 years, uh, they came to a configuration and uh, of all these possible uh, types of uh, of the canal anatomy, they found that the only tooth that showed all eight possible configuration is the maxillary second 
premolar. This is something that we should keep in mind that we can find all of these configurations in the maxillary second premolar. And they were categorized by the number of orifices in the uh, radicular area. For example, the A group, whether it is type 1 or 2 or 3, uh, with, uh, it has deviation in the middle area, but, but uh, only one uh, uh, root orifice in the apical area. For the B group, we have two orifices and so on for the C group and the D group. And this is the uh, Verdu Vertucci work. Keep in mind these uh, configurations for future discussion. Now, let's uh, discuss some tips and tricks that will help us to to get the to know the what what root canal shape are we dealing with for example if only one canal is present it usually is located in the center of the axis prepara preparation it, it is uh, located in the center of the uh, pulp chamber if it is only one canal if only one orifice is is found and it is not in the center of the root we have to look for another orifice because there uh, there is another canal and it is usually in the opposite side so the location of the orifice is important to know if we are having only one canal or multiple ones the relationship of the two orifices to each other is also significant what does that mean it means that the closer they are, the greater the chance that the two canals join at some point in the body of the root. So this is important. As the distance between orifices in a root increases, the greater is the chance that the canal will remain separate and the degree of the canal curvature is also less. The more the orifices, the orifices are, far away from each other this is the idea what, that we were discussing for example in mandibular second molar if it had two canals they are they are usually the distal canal and the meso canal and they are uh, collateral which it which each other which means that we can draw a straight line between them but if they were not in the same if they were not in the same line, then we should look for another mesial canal. We must uh, take notice about uh, the direction of the file when it is inserted to the orifice. If, uh, if the file is inserted into the distal canal of a mandibular molars points either in the buccal or the lingual direction, a second canal is often present, which means that if the 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 file tilts whether it is buccally or lingually when it is inserted in the canal uh, we have another another a second canal that is present and usually these canals are smaller than a single canal uh, we will discuss the isthmus that we uh, introduced at the beginning of the chapter which is the connection communication between two root canals that contain pulp tissue so uh, disinfecting this area is important uh, there are so many shapes some which are uh, so uh, thin connections and some that are real uh, fully connections if they are present in the mandibular molars they are usually in the mesial roots in 80% of the uh, cases it's raining outside and uh, it is actually a nice weathery winter day for example in, in the mandibular first molars 
the canal can take a 90 degree separation in the middle of the root and this requires that we open the axis cavity to the lingual more to get a straight line axis for the uh, for the preparation here the author is discussing the importance of obturation that stops in the apical constriction and it gives the best prognosis for our treatment uh, the least prognosis is actually when we exceed this area and um, this residual, residual uh, obturation material is out actually it, um, يعني, it makes an inflammation it induces an inflammation response here the author is uh, emphasizing about uh, the importance of uh, straight a straight cavity access that uh, it uh, it has the best chance of the de uh, depredment of entire canal space the cleaning of the all canal space it reduces the risk of instrument breakage and it results in straight in entry to the canal orifice here we are going to discuss some um, some uh, tooth canal tooth access cavities for the different uh, situations that we may have for example in the we know in the access cavity for the mandibular uh, centrals it's usually in the lingual side but if the tooth is tilted or um, it is uh, lingually inclined or rotated we may uh, make the access cavity closer to the incisal edge we will show we can see this case of uh, crowded mandibular anterior tooth uh, the canine was axis cavity was from buck from the buccal side and the lateral axis cavity was so close to the incisal edge and also was open buccally and this is the final result of the obturation the first rule in opening an access cavity is to remove any uh, restored material that is previously uh, inserted. Here he is giving us that pr sufficient opening is important to uh, disinfect the whole pulp chamber. Here he uh, they maintain this area that is not necessary to be removed and weaken the teeth we will talk in the uh, restoration ep episode that we previously uh, thought that um, after the root canal treatment the tooth become fragile and the reason for this weakness is that they we said that the tooth is actually uh, losing its uh, internal water or uh, the hypochlorite we are using is softening the dentine, the dentin inside but the actual actual reason is that we are sacrificing a lot of the heart tissue when we are doing the treatment so we mo the more we conserve in our opening the more that we will the more stronger the stronger tooth we will get here he is showing us the different burrs that may be used to do the access cavity uh, op opening uh, for the for the incisors and the premolars we use the two or four uh, round burr and for the molars we use the six the six burr round carbide burr here or the safety tip taper and diamond burr whether it is diamond or carbide this uh, trans metal burr is is uh, good for removing metal uh, restorations we have these shapes and these are called the miller Burr, these. 
we can also use this the DG DG16 Explorer for uh, uh, exploring the orifices or the calcified uh, canals and this one is the JW17 it is thinner and uh, stiffer also the endodontic spoon can be used to locate of location of a calcified canal or remove coronal pulp and caries dentin the spoon is used to remove the coronal pulp and the caries dentin dentin this is the axis cavity of a maxillary uh, incisor we know that it takes a triangular shape its base is to the up up incisal uh, edge and the tip is for the cer in the cervical area we start by uh, the angle of the penetration is perpendicular to the lingual surface then we tilt tilt the uh, burr to um, to get it parallel to the long axis of the root and insert it until we feel that the burr is has fallen then we remove the horn by uh, strokes with withdrawal st strokes uh, like brushing uh, out inside out to remove the pulp chamber with copious irrigation is important with sodium hypochlorite when we are uh, opening the axis cavity to control any uh, br uh, blood present uh, here we are discussing the the concept of removing the lingual shoulder to get here this is the lingual shoulder from the inside of the of the canal to get a straight line axis and uh, to reduce the bend of the uh, of the instruments to decrease any possible uh, breakage so it is a straight line axis cavity uh, can access to the canal orifice is the ideal goal here we should not by any means leave any incisal bevel uh, in opening uh, because it is a weak point for the when we do the restoration and it may cause an occlusal, uh, occlusal failure in the future we must have a straight uh, a straight bed for the restoration we can flare the orifice by using the uh, rotary uh, orifice opener or sometimes the gates glidden Uh, our margins must be smooth for uh, before we do the final restoration to prevent any coronal leakage and uh, su subsequent uh, possible failure now let's discuss uh, what are the ideal uh, ideal places to open the axis cavity for the different tooth morphology here for the maxillary premolars, the perfect uh, entry is between the line, is the center of the line jo um, joining the, the tip of the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp. For the mandibular uh, first molar, the axis cavity is uh, is is taken to the buccal side because we have this uh, the lingual cusp is uh, is bulgy and bulky it uh, it is tilted to the buccal side so our axis cavity is transformed to the buccal cusp more but for the mandibular uh, second molar we can see that it is uh, close to the midline of the line connecting the two cusps the buccal and the lingual so it is the second premolar maxillary the second um, the mandibular second molar 
and the uh, maxillary first molar are close in the shape and the, in the axis cavity um, opening. For the mandibular and the maxillary tooth molars, uh, the the axis cavity is a line connecting the mesial cusp tips. Pulp chambers are rarely rarely found mesial to this imagine, imaginary line. A good initial distal boundary of four maxillary molars is the oblique ridge. So. For mandibular molars, the initial distal boundary is a line connecting the buccal and lingual grooves. For molars, the correct starting location is on the central groove halfway between the mesial and the distal boundaries. Keep this image in your mind. We can use the translamination to uh, to detect if there we have any additional orifices because they reflect line light different from the pulp floor they 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 seem um, less bright now let's talk about what if the pulp chamber was calcified but we can see that we have relucency around the apical area which means that the pathophers had a chance of getting inside the root canal and reaches the periradicular area so opening the opening the calcified tissue uh, the calcified chamber is important to get to dis disinfect the root canals so how do we do it jo before we start talking about the calcification of the pop chamber here uh, the where we you can use also the methylene blue dye to to locate the uh, the calcified root canals or we can use the cha uh, the champagne bubble test that uh, the that uh, the bubbles locate where the where the canals are because we have like void here that creates these bubbles and they are uh, mo uh, they are seen mostly and under the magnification so they are that can aid yani, in the process of uh, locating the orifices uh, we usually start now let's talk about the classification we start with a small k file the 6 8 or 10 or the coc plus file coated with the chilting agent edta should be introduced into the canal deter to determine the patency if you have any catch after we get any glimpse of a catch we must do a short up and down movement and it's in a selective circumferential filling motion so it is like we at first we do a, a, a push then up and down Tilting it, then, uh, then getting it, getting it out. Here, we have a calcified canals, very radicular radiolucency, and the pulp chamber is also uh, calcified the reason of calcification is that the pulp is um, is building a tertiary dentin uh, trying to protect itself from the invasion of the bacteria so the canals become uh, narrower also the pulp chamber we start up by by a two or four round burr in the possible uh, in the possible places of the of the canals so we, we must be really we must know the morphology really well and study the the radiographic uh, images 
they are saying that the bite wing images are the best suited for studying the act for uh, studying the cervical area or the pod chamber yeah. <coughs> then we can use a straight uh, ultrasonic tip or an um, index plotter to locate any orifices then we start inserting the files the 6 8 or the c sh shaped the gentle passive movement at first both apical which means that we are pushing to the apical then we do some rotation and get out we must not we must not pull it pull the file out before we do some uh, preparation to prov uh, prevent any breakage a slight pull signaling resistance usually is an indication that the canal has been located a sequ sequential uh, taking of radiographs to determine that we are in, in the right path is really important then we do the glide path and do an x-ray to, to determine the location to ensure that we are in the right uh, location now at the end of the chapter we will, we will go uh, in a, in a ra rapidly about the morphology of the tooth in the in the maxillary and the and the mandibular arches we can if you want any details you can sc screenshot this uh, about the average time of eruption of each tooth uh, when it uh, when it to reaches its full classification and closes the apex and what is the average length of the root for example here the maxillary, maxillary central incisors these are the, the possible root canal uh, morphology we can have two canals that are def uh, that divined in the apical or the middle third the lateral is shorter but the apex is tilted whether distally or it can be straight it is usually a one canal system for the canine the maxillary one it ha may have deviation in the apical third that goes into two canals and two orifices. Actually, the obesity uh, sections are really informative. The maxillary first premolar it has it may has have one. Uh, it, mo it is mostly two canals two, by two roots or one oval canal that the, that the roots are fused or we can have three canals and three roots the maxillary second premolar that we said in the uh, at the first of the chapter that it can have all the possible all the possible types of the root canal anatomy so it can be fused, the oval shaped canal. It may have two roots with separate separate orifices, or it can have three. Three orifices. For the maxillary first first molar. We can have all. It can. Uh, we have um, the tradi traditional uh, case is that we have three canals and three roots. We may have four canals and three roots, or we can have a C-shaped canal that has m multiple roots canals. The maxillary is like a molar. May have 
from one root and one canal to up to five canals one two three or five four or five the third molar has all the possible configurations and we can see the amount of tilt in the apical third of the root apex this is the mandibular central this is the configurations of the possible root canal anatomy this is the lateral central the mandibular canine oval shaped in the middle we have like this is thin I don't know this is the premolar see the 90 degree uh, the 90 degree separation or here we also have that's 90 degree tilt separation the mandibular first molar two roots three canals or two roots four canals or two roots and five canals it may have the mmc canal which is the middle mesial canal it is located between the two mesial canals and it can be a real one that has a, a, a separate uh, orifice or it can be an ism ismus connecting between the two canals the mesial ones <laughs> this is called the ra radix intermolares uh, which means an additional growth of uh, of a root it is located between the main roots the mandibular second molar it is the most tooth that can have that can have the the c-shaped canal if only one canal is present it usually is located in the center of the axis preparation if only one orifice is found and is and it is not in the center of the root another orifice probably exists on the opposite side the more separation between orifices the less the degree of the canal curvature in the maxillary first premolar the lingual shoulder removal improves the straight line axis in the maxillary second premolar the only tooth that showed all eight possible root canal configuration is the maxillary second premolar maxillary first molar the mesial boundary for both the maxillary and mandibular molars is the line connecting the mesial cusps tip pod chambers are rarely found mesial to this imaginary line a good initial distant boundary for maxillary molars is the oblique ridge mandibular first premolar in mandibular first premolars the starting location is halfway up the lingual incline of the buccal cusp on a line connecting the cusp tips mesial view of the mandibular premolar with a t type v canal configuration the lingual canal separates from the main canal at nearly a right angle this anatomy requires widening of axis in the lingual direction to achieve straight line access to the lingual canal mandibular second premolar requires less of an adjustment because they have less lingual inclination the mandibular first molar for mandibular molars the initial distal distal boundary is a line connecting the buccal and lingual grooves for molars the correct starting location is on the central groove halfway between the mesial and the distal boundaries if the first file inserted into the distal canal 
of a mandibular molar points either in a buccal or lingual direction, a second canal is often present. If two canals are present, they will be smaller than a single canal. 80% of the mesial roots of mandibular first molars have these communications at the apical to middle third junctions. These are called the isthmus. Mandibular second molar. In a mandibular second molar with two canals, both orifices are in the mesiodistal midline. If two orifices are not directly in the mesiodistal midline, a search should be made for another canal on the opposite side. Most C-shaped canals occur in the mandibular second molar.